Hello AP Physics students, it's Mr. Ellis, and in this video I'm going to talk to you about how we're going to solve problems involving uniform circular motion. Uniform, of course, means constant. So these are only, you know, it's going to be sort of skills that work when we have constant speed, and constant radius, but we're going to actually look at a lot of situations like that, including satellites, you know, cars going over spherically shaped hills and things like that. Um, when you see this situation, you have to infer that there is acceleration, right, because the velocity is changing. This acceleration is pointing centripetally toward the middle, and that has a formula, actually. So we're not going to prove this, go into how where it comes from. Um, that is a little complex, and it's not going to be something you're required to know on the AP exam. But here it is, all right? The important thing to note is this the speed is you also sometimes refer to as the tangential speed or velocity because it's tangent to the circle, as you can see. V squared over R. So the only difference really between this and the old strategy we used before is just substituting that in at the end. All right? Let's give this a shot. This is something we're going to see in the lab tomorrow. So I want to make sure you know how to do this. It's also on your homework. So let's start. Step one. Free body diagram. We're looking at this thing. So there's tension, there's weight, and you can see that there's going to be vector components. You know that there's going to be some x component of the tension, some y component of it. Now we got to draw or figure out our coordinate axis. Let's just make x normal and y, you know, vertical. That's fine. That'll work here. And then we set our net force expressions. So these things. What are they equal to? What forces are involved? Well, in the x direction, there's only one force, and in the y direction, there's two, and they go in opposite directions. Uh, we note that it's only accelerating in the x direction, so that's where our centripetal acceleration is occurring, and in the y direction, it's not accelerating. So we can set these things equal to each other. Tx equals mass times acceleration. Ty minus mg equals zero. All right, we're going to need to do both of these because... The angle theta is up here, and we're going to have to use an inverse tangent. So we got to do both the x and y problems. So let's start with the x. Um, this is where it's different. The acceleration now is v squared over r. So we can plug in our values. This is 0 0.075. I'm going to omit the units for time's sake. And we find that uh, Tx equals 0 0.38 newtons. Ty is a little easier. Uh, Ty, because those at, you know, are zero, it's just mg. So when you plug stuff in for that, you get 0.74 newtons. So the angle theta is the inverse tangent of what? Let's see, the opposite is Tx, right? And then the adjacent is Ty. So it's Tx over Ty. And when you plug that in, you get 27 degrees. To find the tension, it's a little easier because now we know the vector components. Uh, it's just Pythagorean theorem, right? So t is the square root of tx squared plus ty squared. Um, plug all that in and you get 0 0.83 newtons. So this is one of your web assigned problems. There are other ones like this. Um, you need to be able to draw that force diagram. You know, if this is a car going around a turn, maybe friction is causing it to turn. Or if there's no friction and it's a bank turn, Maybe it's the normal force from the hill. So drawing that diagram is the first step, and that's why we've practiced that a lot. After that, you know, follow the rules and you'll get there. Thanks for listening.